In this video, we're gonna do like my buddy Juvenile said, we're gonna bring it back for the 9.9 and the 2000s. This is gonna be my 10 fragrances that I really, really enjoyed from the years of the 90s and the 2000s. These are fragrances you definitely remember when it came out. So go ahead and stay tuned if you wanna learn more about 10 fragrances that I really enjoyed from the 90s and the 2000s. Stay tuned. What's going on everybody? My name is Joshua and this is our channel, Sense Sense. To all loyal subscribers who continue to watch my videos each and every day, to you kind folks, wherever you are, kudos. And to all you new people, maybe checking out the channel for the very first time. Social distancing is key, but you don't have to do YouTube distancing. Draw closer, my friend. Join the family. Today I'll be talking about 10 fragrances from the designer realm that were great quintessential staple fragrances from the 90s and the 2000s. The order of these will be based off the year the fragrance was released. This will not be ordered off of least favorite to favorite. So at the end of the day, number one might not be my favorite and number 10 may not be my favorite. These are just 10 fragrances from the 90s and the 2000s that I definitely love and I still own today. Starting off the list at number 10 is a fragrance from the house of Tommy Hilfiger. Tommy Hilfiger is a clothing brand that was synonymous with the 90s and the early 2000s, and everybody, who is anybody, knew about this fragrance. From the house of Tommy Hilfiger, Tommy. Tommy is a fragrance that is reminiscent of the 90s, clean, fresh, easy going. You have apple, mint, and grapefruit, along with a bunch of other notes, but that apple and mint combination along with that grapefruit kind of gave it a slightly unique vibe in a very, very saturated fresh fragrance industry. This fragrance was launched in 1995. I was only 10 years old when this fragrance was launched, but this one right here was super, super popular even when I got into high school. So if you're looking for something to add to your collection that's gonna be super cheap and it's super fresh and has a slightly unique characteristic when it comes to fresh fragrances, go ahead and check out Tommy's Tommy. Also released in 1995 is a fragrance that was ultra unique. It had its own scent, its own bottle look, and it even had its own box look. Everything was different with this fragrance, even down to the metal tin can that it came in. From the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mal. Lamal is a quintessential classic staple that everybody knows about from the way it smells to the bulge that's always up in your face whenever you see the bottle. This is a lavender and mint bomb. This is something that I like to wear often at night. It's very, very calming, very, very relaxing. This is definitely something that is ultra unique at its time. We have a lot more fragrances that have introduced the notes of lavender and mint and have gotten a little more you know, into that. This was also really cool because at the time, fragrances that had a lot of lavender in it were barbershop fragrances and were meant for more older or more established gentlemen. This was a young guy's fragrance and this used to be a powerhouse. It's often been watered down as formulations have come out and a lot of the flankers have become more popular than this one, but this one is where it all started. From the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier, Jean-Paul Gaultier, Le Mal. At number eight is a fragrance that I do not own a bottle of, sadly, but that's mainly because I have what I like to call the upgraded version of that. I actually have Profumo Special Blend from the house of Giorgio Romani, Aqua de Jo. Aqua de Jo was a very, very popular fragrance back then. Everyone knew it as liquid panty dropper. If you went in a club in the, the late 90s, early 2000s, you would just smell this in the air. Different characteristic between this one and the classic is this one has a little more darker, earthier notes. You're gonna get some musk in this. You're gonna get some patchouli in this. You're gonna get some stuff that's a little different. It gives a little more of an edge to it. The original was citrus and C notes. It's all you got for the most part, but it was, it was ultra unique and nothing smelled like it. And it was the best selling fragrance at the time. And if I'm not mistaken, unless Sauvage has passed it, it's still the best selling fragrance of all time. From the house of Giorgio Romani, the older brother to this guy, Aqua de Jo. Up next is a Liz Claiborne Classic. This fragrance put the brand on the map. This was in 1996. It came in a metal can. It had its own little thing that held the cap in place. It was almost like a ripoff in a sense when it came to the packaging of Le Mal, but I digress. From the house of Liz Claiborne, Curve. 
Curve is actually one of the first fragrances to actually make the note of pineapple popular. No, it wasn't Aventus. This one actually made that much more popular at a much earlier time. This is pineapple, citruses, and musk. A lot of the same notes you get from Aventus, but it had its own vibe, its own characteristic, and it was actually ultra cheap. This can be had for less than $30. A lot of these older fragrances have become cheap now. They're mass, mass built, mass put out. There's tons of them everywhere, and you can find this in every Marshalls, TJ Maxx, you know, Burlington, whatever have you, you'll find this guy. Back in my day in high school, everybody wore this. You had a fossil watch, you had Doc Martin boots and Curve. It was like the holy trifecta of coolness. Air quotes, people, coolness. From the house of Liz Claiborne, Curve. Up next was every little high school pervert's wet dream of a fragrance. Why? Because you had to walk through a store full of bras and drawers and a bunch of girls shopping for them from the house of Victoria's Secrets, very sexy for him. This is a fragrance that had its own vibe. It was earthy, citrusy, and spicy. Came out in 2001, and it was a fragrance that drove the girls crazy. Nothing quite smelled like this bad boy, and it had the weirdest bottle because it was meant to be displayed. Like it was just this really awesome bottle. Clearly it wasn't the best packaging. It didn't have the best longevity and it didn't have the best performance, but I have to tell you, back in the day, popular. Graduated in 04, and this was really, really popular around that time. From the House of Victoria's Secrets, very sexy for him. In 2004, the year I graduated from high school, showing my age is a fragrance from the House of Chanel. This was one of the first flankers from the line, from the Allure line, this fragrance is called Allure Ohm Sport. Allure Ohm Sport was an awesome fragrance because it brought the world of freshness and sweetness together. For this, most fragrances were either fresh or sweet, gourmand or citrus. It was really no in between, and this took those citrusy notes and threw tonka bean in it, and it gave its own cool vibe. Often compared to Versace Pour Ohm, this is a sweeter version of that. This fragrance right here was definitely something that a lot of guys reach for. You only reach for it if you had money though, because Chanel has always been expensive. From the house of Chanel, Chanel's Allure Ohm Sport. Coming out in 05 was a fragrance that had an ultra unique bottle and it had a really cool and different smell. It brought the note of seaweed to the forefront, a salty, citrusy, musky fragrance from the house of Bulgari, a favorite of mine, Bulgari's Aqua. The water droplet of the fragrance world. This is a fragrance meant to sit on your cabinet like this, and it's a fragrance that pisses off every fragrance collector because it looks terrible on your bookshelf. This takes the blue craze and all of these fresh fragrances that were being pumped out year after year and gives it a slight unique vibe. A sea salty fresh fragrance from the house of Bulgari, Bulgari's Aqua. The very next year brought us a fragrance from the house of Nautica. And again, another clothing brand that was synonymous at the time. Every guy wanted to be that guy with his Sperry's and his polo and his sweater tied around his neck, riding on a yacht, listening to Duran Duran. I digress. From the house of Nautica, Nautica Voyage. Nautica Voyage had a green apple, watery kind of vibe. It had this kind of cucumber vibe to it. This is something that is super, super popular in the fragrance world. Every person who's in the community for the most part has either smelled this, owned this, or is about to get it. This is one of the easiest to grab fragrances when it comes to warm weather, springtime and summer. Super, super cheap, less than $20. Easy grab. Since this was released, it was a summertime classic and it's still a summertime classic to this day. From the house of Nautica, Nautica Voyage. Next up is a fragrance from the house of Versace that was also released in 2006. This is a fragrance that brought star fruit to the forefront. This fragrance was a blockbuster when it came out and it is popular beyond belief still. It is a summer gem. If you haven't smelled it, you should. From the house of Versace, Versace's man, Ofresh. Versace Mano Fresh is a fragrance that every person who loves Versace has either smelled or owns. Lemon, bergamot, starfruit, 
This is a super, super quintessential summertime fragrance that's going to give you this fresh blast of citrus and it's going to make you feel like you're just having the time of your life. As cliche as that is, this brings back a lot of fond memories when me and my wife first met. This is one of the fragrances that I wore a lot and it worked perfectly in the summertime months. I used to have a convertible back in the day before I had kids and I used to roll with the top down and the smell was in the air. It was a great time. Before kids, bills, and the crushing weight of responsibility. Great back then, still great today. From the house of Versace, Versace's Man O' Fresh. Last but not least is a fragrance that came out in 2008. This is from the house of Guerlain. It is often referred to a, as a niche house, but at the same time, they release fragrances that are super cheap and kind of are designer. They don't really do a whole lot besides fragrance. I think they're one of the best fragrance houses. I recently went to Vegas and smelled some fragrances from their boutique, and I have to say, I now own three. And before that trip, I owned zero. From the house of Guerlain, Guerlain own. I don't have the original bottle. I have the cool little Listerine bottle that they all are in now because Guerlain decided that he was gonna use the same bottle, which is pretty smart. This is a super cool, fresh and bright and almost awakening fragrance. It's got notes of lime and mint that work perfectly together. Almost has like a lime mojito feel to it, but at the same time has this gentlemanly classic feel with a very modern approach. This is a grown man's fragrance. And I remember when this first came out, I didn't even know what it was. I didn't even have access to it. But I remember there was a gentleman that I went to church with at the church that I grew up going to that used to wear this. He used to always brag about wearing Guerlain. He would say Guerlain. And at the same time, I didn't know what any of the fragrances were, but he called it Guerlain Homie. He wasn't talking like homie. He was talking like Ohm, as in Guerlain Ohm. Rip in the chat. This fragrance is something that you should reach for or you should check into if you're looking for something that's more classic, more gentlemanly, but with a modern approach with a very, very bright and refreshing opening. Rounding out my 10 fragrances from the 99s and the 2000s, the 90s and the 2000s, the years that I grew up and became a man. Me being a full grown man is debatable. I know, you people make comments about this hat all the time. Staying backwards, Guerlain, Ohm. All right, everybody, that about does it for me. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you made it to this point of the video, because at the end of the day, it seems like you've enjoyed it. While you're at it, why don't you go ahead and click the notification bell that way when my videos come out, you people, yes, you, you'll be the first to know. And as always, make sure you stay your ass home and I'll smell you later. Peace.